Supreme Court of the Maldives has surprised everyone by ordering the release of nine men whom the country's dictatorial president, Abdullah Yameen, had thrown behind bars on trumped-up charges. One of them is former President Mohammad Nasheed, who's in exile since 2015. But current Chief Justice Uz Abdullah Saeed was handpicked by none other than President Yameen himself. So why has the man conspired, considered rather a political appointee suddenly delivered a judgment against the current government? Senior Foreign Editor Padma Rao reports. The authoritarian president of the Maldives, Mr. Abdullah Yameen, is steeped in trouble. A judgment by the country's highest court has just ordered him to release nine legislators, and one of them is the Maldives' first democratically elected president, Mohammad Nasheed, who has been in exile in Sri Lanka and the United Kingdom since 2015. President Yameen had arrested them on various charges that are said to be politically motivated. Mr. Nasheed left the country on health grounds and has since rallied together the entire opposition to oust Mr. Yameen. President Yameen has usurped all powers, brushed off charges of immense corruption and nepotism, reportedly ordered the elimination of all dissenters, including young bloggers critical of his regime. He has also cozied up to Saudi Arabia, allowing its Wahhabi Islam to dig its tentacles into the island nation. And he has sold entire atolls of the beautiful nation to both Riyadh as well as China. Deals in which there were reportedly no palms left ungreased. The president has also filled the ranks of public officers with yes-men. One such was said to be the current Chief Justice, Mr. Uz Abdullah Saeed. Justice Saeed has come under fire from jurists around the world, including in India, for many controversial moves he executed at the behest of the president. Activists running Twitter campaigns against President Yameen disclosed that the president had put the chief justice under huge pressure ahead of yesterday's judgment. But Justice Saeed did not relent and went ahead with the verdict. Since the judgment was pronounced, President Yameen's supporters have been doing their best to smear the reputation of the chief justice. They allege that he was bribed $20 million to go against the dictatorial president. Mali is rife with rumours. On the country or countries to which Justice Saeed may have taken a secret trip just weeks after receiving the petition he addressed in the judgment. Nobody can say where he travelled to, but that wherever it was, Justice Saeed would have received a promise of external support and other assurances. In the interim, President Yameen's police have confronted Mr. Nasheed's supporters who are celebrating the verdict with tear gas and pepper spray. The president has fired his police chief for promising to respect the Supreme Court's judgment. Demands for President Yameen to step down are growing louder, but he is unlikely to go easily. Sources in the Maldivian Democratic Party of former President Nasheed have told Vion that in all likelihood, Mr. Yameen will repeat what has come to be his favorite way of addressing dissenters, in this case, the Supreme Court, by sending in a posse of policemen and arresting all those who dare confront him. Padma Rao, Vion. And we just spoke to the man who's at the center of the storm, Mohammed Nasheed, former president, currently in exile. He spoke to us about the Supreme Court verdict, his future plans and China's growing presence in the Maldives. Listen in. I intend to go back as soon as the, uh, our, uh, my, my own party and our coalition decide that I should be going back. Uh, I will be in, in, in the Maldives in good time for the election. Uh, well, uh, uh, um, there are two very important things that think that be happening in the Maldives. As we all know, we sit in a, a, a specific enclave in the Indian Ocean, and, and therefore our foreign policy and our security issues must be deliberated, must be in mind to about what is relevant to India and Sri Lanka and everyone else in the Indian Ocean. But we are very concerned that the situation is still closed. Um, it might, it can go out of control. Uh, we are hopeful that India is closely watching the situation, and uh, we welcome the statement from Indian Foreign Affairs, uh, um, asking the government of all the five party uh, Supreme Court ruling. Um, so we are hopeful. President the came, came in 2013, and he has been trying to revert it back to where it was. Um, it slipped us from our democracy change. The interesting thing here is that we've not been able to do that. We've been able to maintain um, some contours of our 
democratic constitution. And therefore, the Supreme Court itself is still uh, fairly independent. The political we will not be able to have a mature democratic country in a matter of few weeks. That won't happen. It's going to be a process. Uh, uh, it will take time. And people have to be patient. Um, and we will all have to put our effort into it and see that is. Uh, we would need a lot of assistance from India. We would need a lot of assistance from other the international community at large. It won't be easy, but it can be done. It's global. The decision by the Supreme Court in Maldives is a major shot in the arm for Mohammad Nasheed, the former president in exile. Democracy, we can tell you, is barely a decade old in that country. Nasheed was the country's first democratically elected leader. Before that, Maldives was ruled for three decades by Mamun Abdul Gayum, the strongman of Maldives. He was voted out of the president's office in the 2008 election. That is the year when Nasheed took over. Five years later, in 2013, there was a chaotic snap election which is the election that Nasheed lost and Gayoom's family made a return to power. This time, it was his half-brother, Abdullah Yamin, who won the election. He is now the president of Maldives. His Betnoir and political opponent, Mohammad Nasheed, who we just spoke to, had to resign in 2012 after he faced massive public protests for ordering the arrest of a senior judge. He was later sentenced to a 13-year jail term. He escaped that. He got asylum in Britain. And from here, the political situation in this country only got worse. This is what happened. Gayoom had a falling out with his half-brother, the current president, Yamin. Gayoom was evicted from his own party that he led for three decades alongside other loyalists. And since then, this rival faction of the ruling party has joined hands with Mohammad Nasheed, who remains in exile, to form an opposition alliance. It is this alliance whose members were jailed. It is this alliance of a former president and a former dictator that is challenging the authority of the current president. Now that's what's happening in the Maldives. After the Supreme Court announced the decision, Mohammed Nasheed's party, the Maldivian Democratic Party, called for the resignation of President Abdullah Yamin. That's not happening anytime soon. There is no doubt that the judgment is a huge turning point in Maldivian politics. The government has projected itself so far as the upholder of the law in that country. Previous court judgments have gone in favor of the Yamin government. The, the chief justice was handpicked by the president himself. It was being seen as a political appointment. And that, according to the opposition, is the problem. They say that the government was using the courts and these favorable verdicts to clamp down political dissent. So now, when a court ruling by the same Chief Justice has gone against the Yamin government, the self-proclaimed upholder of the law is in a catch-22 situation. He, if he doesn't implement the order, he loses face and moral high ground. And if he implements it, he benefits his political opponents. So what will the president do is a million-dollar question. And that brings us to the second part of the judgment. With today's ruling, the Supreme Court has paved the way for the reinstatement of 12 parliamentarians who defected from Yamin's party, which is the ruling party. This means that the opposition is now in majority in the country's parliament. The president is heading the minority party and that makes his position untenable. Today's decision is a big shot in the arm for Mohammed Nasheed, the exiled former president who says he will return to power. You just heard him say that. Meanwhile, the chaos is spilling out of the the sphere of politics in the Maldives, the commissioner of police, the police chief, Ahmad Arif, said he will implement the court's order. Before he could lift a finger, the Yamin government promptly sagged him. And that was the trigger. Clashes between the protesters there and the police began. Pitched battles, as you can see on your screens, were fought on the streets. The situation still remains tense. And some of you, I'm sure, must be wondering... Why the world should care about the political churn in a small island nation? We'll tell you why. Among the countries most closely monitoring the developments in the Maldives is India. New Delhi says it wants to see a stable, peaceful and prosperous Maldives. Why the keen interest? Let's start with history. India and Maldives have maintained close ties since the 1970s. In 1988, the Indian army foiled a coup in the Maldives. It was attempted by pro elam groups. Since then, the Indian Navy has maintained its presence in the Maldives and recently India dispatched water aid to Malay, the capital of Maldives, after a fire destroyed the generator of the country's biggest water plant. 
plant. But this old friendship is now being tested by Chinese ambitions. Beijing's growing influence in the region has not gone down very well with New Delhi, understandably so. The Chinese are new entrants in Mali, but they've moved fast. China opened a full-fledged embassy in the Maldives only a few years back in 2011, to be precise. But it has rapidly ramped up its presence in the region, especially after the visit of President Xi Jinping in 2014. And the recent free trade agreement signed between China and Maldives has caught Delhi off guard. Things aren't going down very well between these two. Before securing this agreement, Beijing already had a free trade pact with Islamabad and has been pouring in billions of dollars worth of investments into that country, as well as in Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bhutan. Essentially, India's neighborhood is becoming Chinese colony. But on its part, Maldives still maintains that India remains its closest friend and ally. It does not help that the current president, Mr. Yamin, is seen as pro-China. The current chaos has also put the safety of Indians in the Maldives at risk. The government has assured that they will be secure. New Delhi maintains it is watching closely. And that's where things stand as we 